Let's go. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Rui Mendes from WDL team and uh, I'll be your host for this workshop. This will be the last workshop of this phase, the first phase. And today with us, we have João. Hi, João. Hi. Coming from uh, BaseCon to talk, us, to talk to us about, um, let me see, intelligent document entity extraction for city institutions. Right, João? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so um, João has a Master of in Biomedical Engineering at Philp uh, in the University of Porto in Portugal and currently is working as a data scientist slash machine learning engineer at BaseCon, uh, implementing and deploying machine learning models to perform accounting related tasks. Uh, just a, a few warnings, let me say that we will have a Q&A session at the end uh, of the workshop. And I will be the, I'll, I'll, I will be reading your questions from Hermit. You can use the, the Q and A uh, feature on uh, Hermit. Um, this workshop will be recorded, and the link will be available as usual in the weekly newsletter uh, that will be published ne next Wednesday. So, Joel, thank you so much for being uh, with us today. I hope you are excited as I am with this workshop. I, I, I it seems very interesting, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Rui, and thanks a lot for the introduction and uh, the chance to be here today. So let me share my screen. All right. So is the screen available? All right, so today, uh, like we said, uh, I will talk a bit about um, the intelligent way of extract document entities from, from documents for, for city institutions. So a little bit about myself. So I'm Joao, uh, data scientist from BaseCon. I'm a member of the data brewers team inside BaseCon. And I've been working uh, uh, on natural language processing and computer vision projects uh, in different business sectors as HR, uh, telecom, and, and accounting. So for our agenda today, the plan is to talk a bit about the document uh, instruction context. Then we will go through uh, the machine learning approach and um, explore a bit the Shagrid research work. Um, then um, we will uh, talk a bit about the, the information extraction step, some challenges and improvements that, that can be done on this, uh, the demo itself and, and the questions on, on the end of the presentation. So let's start then. So uh, since we are on the context of smart cities, uh, so the city itself is composed by uh, different institutions and these institu institutions trade a lot of documents itself uh, in different formats, in PDF, images and so on. So you can imagine uh, day by day of these institutions dealing with huge amounts uh, of documents. So the way is if we focus just in one of the institutions, let's say like the, the city council, uh, let's think about a bit about that, the, the, the workflow of, of this uh, institution. So imagine deal with bank accounts, uh, lease agreements, some electric bills, for instance. When uh, the instance, the, the institution receives these uh, documents, it needs to process the documents and extract the, the entities. In the case of the bank entities, we have like uh, bank accounts and uh, some bank information that is necessary to, to extract. On the contracts, we have the intervenience, uh, the different contract types that these contracts could be. And uh, uh, on the last level, the, the bills like extract the amounts, which kind of service uh, and so on. So give a little bit more context on the entity extraction. So what we call about these entities, let's look for this bill, for instance. In this case, we have the, an electric bill. And here we have a bunch of, of information. 
So on the top of the header of the document, we have the, the customer if the customer info for, for, for the client. We have the billing date, the rebates, the, the usage of the power that uh, this uh, invoice uh, uh, was uh, consumed. And also uh, at least like the, the, the total charge uh, for, for this current month. So for, for, for contextualizing this, this is what we call the entities that we want to, to extract from, from the document. So, and yeah, this, this uh, as you imagine, uh, to, to extract this, these fields, uh, usually um, the way that is processing nowadays, it's very time consuming because usually are people that needs to, to look for these documents and manually extract these entities. And the, the downside of this is it's very time consuming. It's a, a boring task, let's say. So the question is right now, how can we parse this automatically and save this info? So let's start by looking for this on the automation uh, level. So here, imagine that you receive, the city institution in this case, receive a bunch of documents. We have like a, a entity extractive system that can automatically look for these documents and save the, the, the entities like the date, the usage and the total charge of these bills in a database and some uh, structure um, way. Just by this, this, this level on automation phase, this could be very powerful for institutions because this allows us to, us to, to save time and money. Uh, and just on this level, it could be very uh, beneficial uh, for, for the institutions. Then we can uh, add an additional layer on top of the automation. So now that we can uh, extract the entities from the documents and have uh, the information stored in a database, we can like uh, extend the capabilities of this uh, process. And here we can like build some dashboards to, to, to keep track uh, of the costs of the users of the energy of the image and energy, for instance, and also uh, understand the consumption behavior and take some actions about this. So this could be very powerful to 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 use these dashboards to perform uh, this kind of analytics. And on top of that, you can also uh, implement some predictive analysis like forecasting uh, and do some, some uh, analysis on the, the energy side, uh, the cost side that uh, you are planning to have uh, based on uh, your consumption of the, the previous months. So this is what we can offer uh, uh, for the institutions. Uh, with a layer of automation and analytics. So this could be uh, very beneficial for, for in the context of a smart city uh, in also on the smart institution. So the solution for this, uh, we have like a, a, machine, a machine learning approach to, to design a, a system that can perform what we described previously. So, here we have like the, the ML life cycle that most of us are aware uh, how this works. So basically we start by defining the problem and the solution. We get the data for our uh, problem. We do some uh, uh, EDA to understand the data uh, and so on. And then uh, we, we prepare the data to, to, to train a model. To train this model, we actually define some kind of model or network, and then we train the network, and then we, we deploy. With the model deploy, we can document and present the solution and maintain this system. So here, it's very important to, to highlight the, the, the connection between the deployment and the training phase, because um, here, uh, uh, you need to have some kind of model monitoring to detect data drifts and uh, model drift on the performance side to when this scenario happens, you trigger some pipeline of retraining and um, update your model um, with new data uh, and so on. So this is about the life cycle. Uh, then uh, we jump for the data collection step. So I would say this is the, the most important part of the, 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 let's say, the ML process, 
because here um, we can have the lucky to have already some data that is currently labeled. And in that way, it's more easier to, to start the process. Obviously, you need to, to process uh, that data as well. But imagine the, 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 the scenario in, in which you don't have that data and you need to, to, to build the data set from scratch. So this is what uh, we are talking here. So for this solution, uh, we need to, to, to accomplish several milestones. So the first one is to, to set up a crowd of annotators to, to label um, our documents. With this crowd, it's essentially to, to instruct them how uh, the, they should uh, um, label the document. And when they label, we get our label data for, for our models. But actually, that we need to, to validate uh, this, this data between all of the annotators so the data be consistent. And then um, we reach uh, the data for the training uh, step. So usually these kind of models need a uh, amount of quality uh, data, and this is the, the starting point. So in terms of labeling, um, there are a bunch of open source solutions on the internet that you can use in your project. Here uh, we list some of them. Um, then you have some uh, the, the the usual cloud-based solutions from the the, the big three enterprises. Uh, one example of them is to be the AWS uh, SageMaker Ground Truth that allow you to, to build your uh, uh, crowds um, to make the annotation step. And also uh, gives also the, the, the possibility to use a crowd that is already uh, built by AWS to, to train also, uh, to train not, to, to label the, the data set that uh, you pretend. Uh, moreover, we have also third uh, party companies that can do this for you, uh, like Happen and Define Crowds. Uh, there are some examples of uh, enterprises that um, are uh, dedicated to, to do this kind of labeling uh, step on your data set. So, uh, also on the labeling, uh, again, very important to, to highlight the process of the labeling. So usually we have some person that comes from the business or have a, a high understanding about uh, how the, the documents should be labeled. And this person share this uh, knowledge and uh, know how about how the crowd uh, should uh, label these documents um, in the correct way and guarantee uh, quality and consistent between uh, all of elements of the crowd. This is the only way um, to, 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 to ensure that our uh, documents have a, a very good quality and are consistent. And then uh, in this step, we have the, the label documents um, then stored in some place to be consumed. Um, so some highlights here. Uh, it's very important to guarantee the, the data quality because otherwise uh, our models will be uh, not so performant. So let's go to the modeling phase. So here uh, we have a snapshot of the paper uh, that covers most of this um, topic of uh, extract and um, the the entities from the documents. So here is uh, the line of research that we have been using uh, for this kind of systems. It's called Shagrid uh, Solid Understanding 2D Documents. So I will talk a bit about this line of research and how it works. Um, so here we have the Shagrid. So Shagrid is not a model. It's not a deep learning uh, architecture. It's a new way of represent uh, a document in a 2D grid of characters. So on the left, you have the, the, the original document. And on the right, you have the shared grid matrix. So it's a, a new way of encode the information for the document in this, to do, in the, in this 2D grid. So we need to understand the document and extract all of their components, like the, the characters, the words, uh, the lines, the, the tables, all of the layout information 
uh, you can uh, try to encode uh, with this um, shared read representation. So then uh, we have here like a comparison between uh, different ways of uh, represent uh, the documents. So here I will talk a bit the, the conventional way on the NLP approach, uh, the computer vision approach, and also the chat read uh, approach. So let's start for the NLP solution. Uh, the first one that you can see here, um, it's basically the, the text itself, uh, the original document that was, it could be a PDF or something related uh, with that. And when you work on the, the test side, you usually apply a, a, an OCR to uh, extract the text, the, the, the text from this document. And then uh, you will have the document has a serialized string. So the downside of this NLP approach is in some way you ignore the, the 2D layout of the document. Um, on the other side, uh, you have the, um, the image approach. So um, you can uh, preserve the 2D layout, but in another way, uh, you operate on the pixel. So you don't, you can't encode the, the textual semantics since you are just looking for pixels. And in this step, you are mostly uh, uh, looking for the layout, like the tables uh, of the, the document itself. And then we have Shagrid, like a, a solution that uh, it looks for the both worlds, like the NLP and computer vision. And then it operates on text and preserves the, the 2D layout. So here is our uh, Shagrid matrix. So if we you zoom in, you will see like uh, the, the grid is essentially um, populated with zeros, like the, the background of the document. And then you have the characters that are mapped to a scalar value. For instance, the C here, it's mapped for a tree. So this will be categorical. So each uh, uh, scalar value on the grid will be corresponding to a specific letter. So this is very powerful uh, in a way that operates on text, preserves the 2D layout of a document, and gives you the, the possibility of reduce the dimension of the image without lose uh, too much information. Because uh, since you are not working with pixels, uh, you can't uh, reduce uh, the, the, the dimension uh, without lose uh, too much information. And despite that, one of the, the powerful features of Shagrid is you can capture and maintain um, the, the layout structure for and a particular example is it encodes the font size, which is not possible for uh, 1D uh, text approach, for instance. With this encoding, you can distinct the headers. That it's very interesting on the document understanding side. So let's move forward. Um, here, it's highlighted and described uh, the way uh, in excess that how we build a shaggy representation. So. Our starting point is a document. Then uh, you need to apply uh, the, the text, uh, the, the OCR extraction to collect the text. And uh, with the OCR, we'll provide you the characters and the, the characters bounding boxes with the, the, the coordinates uh, of the character on the text. And this is the, the, the inputs that you need to build uh, the Shagrid matrix. So, you can customize a bit and process uh, this grid. Uh, so you need to define a dictionary of characters that you want to include in your grid. So every character that uh, uh, you pretend to, to uh, project in this grid, you need to define. And also, uh, you can um, discard some characters that have very low occurrence. But it's like on the pre-processing side of the shy grid. Um, you have a chance of do this kind of uh, uh, methods. So then we have our ground truth. Um, so this is basically uh, uh, based on semantic segmentation. Um, we have the document. We have the, the document annotations by the manual labeling. And we build the, the segmentation mask with these uh, annotations. Uh, for the different uh, labels that we have. 
here we have like the, an example for a supplier dates line and amount so this is basically what our model will try to predict then um, we have here uh, the training and the model architecture uh, so it starts from the left the the shark read uh, in 2d dimension will be the starting point of the, the process then um, since these uh, values uh, these scalar values are categorical you need to apply one not encoding on this matrix so you transition for a 2d matrix to a tensor in which the number of channels are corresponding to the different uh, characters that you map on your dictionary uh, and on this dictionary we have one value for the background uh, the, the the values for the characters that you define and uh, an unknown uh, um, character that uh, will be mapped for all of the entities that are outside of the background class and the other uh, characters that were defining on the dictionary. Then we have the let's say the deep neural network uh, architecture. So this is basically uh, an encoder decoder block. Um, if you look in detail for these uh, blocks, you see that uh, the height here is a proxy for the, the feature map uh, resolution map, um, and the width corresponds to the it's it's a proxy for the number of channels. So this C is the base channel, so the outer is used uh, uh, 64 channels for the starting point. Um, and basically, you have the encoder and the decoder side. For the decoder, it consists uh, on a VDG uh, type uh, network uh, with related convolutions, batch normalization, uh, and spatial dropout. Uh, some particular uh, hints here is the authors use try to deconvolutions instead of max pooling for the downsampling. Uh, since they, they um, report that this has a better performance uh, on the model uh, training and, 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 and metrics. Uh, the block for uh, N5, uh, it was not used at done sample, so uh, these two blocks here. Um, and it uses delayed convolutions to guarantee uh, that they don't done sample uh, the image uh, size. Then we have uh, two decoders branch, one for the semantic segmentation part, just to predict uh, if a particular uh, scalar pixel belongs or not to a, an entity, uh, like the ones that we have here, uh, and, a, and a decoder for the, the bounding box uh, regression, because we actually want to, um, to, to, to detect the lines. So, the bounding box regression here is very important to uh, enable us to do eastern segmentation because we can um, distinct on the line several instances of the, the classes that we are trying to predict. So it's very, this block enables us to do uh, that um, part. So both decoders are mostly uh, built on convolutional blocks, uh, which essentially uh, reverse the dump sampling of the encoder uh, via stride to the uh, transpose convolutions. So uh, it's basically uh, the, 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 the model architecture that uh, was described on this Shagrid uh, paper. So it's called ShagridNet uh, by Anup Kati et al. So we can have more uh, uh, understanding and more information on the paper uh, of this uh, and implementation of this network. So then we have the, the training parameters. So since we are dealing with segmentation here, we have the, the class imbalance uh, problem since we have a lot more uh, backgrounds uh, uh, the distribution of a class is much higher in comparison with with the other labels. For that, we can uh, use less functions like the uh, focal loss, um, dice loss, or weight cross entropy. Uh, so we can use a bunch uh, and and try the the ones that suits most uh, on your use cases. Since uh, focal loss and dice loss are the most commonly used on this kind of um, uh, problems. Then you have the, the, the model matrix. Um, 
And in this case, the most used uh, are the dice score and the intersection of a unit to, to, ev to evaluate the model on the, the different epochs of the training phase. Then you can apply some uh, data augmentation. For instance, you can apply padding and random cropping in a fixed range, and also apply uh, padding and resize to, to a target resolution. Of course, you can uh, be more creative and try other kinds of augmentations to extend um, your data sets in, in some way. And then um, you have the, the model optimizers, like uh, the other users, the stochastic gradient descent with momentum. But you can also uh, try other optimizers to see what is more suitable for um, uh, your, your scenario. So let's move on. So at this stage, we are just uh, talking on the, the, let's say, the image size. Um, and actually, we want to extract uh, the information part. So we can evaluate just the segmentation part. Now I will talk a bit about the way that uh, we extract the, the actual string of the model. So again, uh, the shark need will be the, the starting point uh, for, for us. It will, it will be the input for the, the deep learning model. Um, and then the model will produce this, this predicting mask. So imagine you have the mask, but you actually want to know uh, which is a string that is inside of this red um, mask. So how we do that? So we have the, the deep, lear uh, deep learning model predicting the mask, and we have the OCR the bounding boxes and the text. So with this information, we build a word grid uh, that projects all of the, uh, the, the words on, on the word grid. And this allows us to, to make like a, a, an intersection between what the model predicted and the word grid uh, with um, the word mask and uh, the word text, actually. So if we look for, for the, the um, the red mask here, that is the total amount, you will see that if you make an intersection, you will uh, match this yellow box. So with this intersection, you can go uh, on the word grid and uh, on the OCR and extract the word that is inside of this yellow box. So it's basically how we implement this uh, extraction of the, the string itself. So then you have some evaluation metrics on the, the information extraction part. So the first one and the, the one that was used for the authors, and it's commonly used also on speech recognition, it is the word error rate. So this metric is based on, it counts the number of insertion, deletion, and modifications, and divides this across all of the samples of your uh, set. Uh, in order to compute some kind of um, performance on your information extraction step. Then uh, the authors used this word error rate and computed the, the word accuracy. So basically it's just one minus the, the word error rate and you, you'll have the word accuracy. And the word accuracy is very uh, informative in the way that it could be negative, which is means that it's more uh, it's in, you do, it's it takes more time uh, to do with a system, so it's actually uh, benefits to do it manually when the, the this is uh, negative this score, or uh, we, we, when it's positive that the model um, can can extract and you have like a score uh, in terms of performance. In another way, um, you have like some fuzzy metrics, uh, like Levenstein distance that could, could compute a fuzzy, a fuzzy score. That it's very important uh, to relate since we are working with with text. Um, sometimes the, when you cal calculate and the performance uh, is just one uh, unique character uh, that is uh, uh, wrong or not, and sometimes this could be. Um, due to OCR um, problems. So you can define some thresholds of using metrics and also evaluate your model. So it's another way of doing this. 
Then uh, I will uh, talk a bit about the results. So these results were uh, on the Shagri paper. So the actors use the word accuracy as uh, the metric to uh, analyze um, these these models. In terms of fields, they use the invoice number, amount date, um, the vendor name, the vendor address, uh, the line items, the uh, description, the quantity, and the amounts. And then, in terms of models, they use a, a sequential model that is basically a, a RNN model uh, with a sequence of characters and, and inputs and a sequence of, of labels as output. So the, the sequential model here is our uh, text baseline. Then you have the image only, that is, um, they just use the image itself. Um, uh, and this is the, the baseline for the image approach. And then you have the Shagrid net uh, with the architecture that we have been talking uh, since this stage. And then you have the, the, uh, the hybrid approaches that takes both Shagrid and also the, um, the image. So you have two decoders, one receives the Shagrid um, and also the, 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 the image, uh, the raw image. But for, for this uh, discussion, I will just focus on the first uh, three models. So when you look for the results, you see like, for instance, on the invoice date, the, the, the sequential and the Shagri uh, are, are very similar. So this, um, these fields that are very static, they don't have uh, a higher variance on the document. The, the, the sequential, the NLP approach, uh, it could be very suitable for uh, fix and resolve our needs. Um, even the, 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 in this case, since uh, the text is very informative, the, the sequential model uh, performs better uh, than the, the image. Uh, but if we uh, move for uh, fields that the, the layout, it's very important to help the model to predict, like the, the, the lines um, items, like the description and the quantities, you see um, that the, the shag read and even the, the, the computer vision approach, it's better than the, the text-based model. So um, actually, on the, the NLP approach, it's negative. So it's in this case, it's beneficial to do this manually instead of use this sequential model. So uh, you, you see that here, then, the image only is better than the NLP. And the shag read is actually better um, than the other uh, two. So uh, I would say that shag read night here is a more strong uh, uh, solution since it works well uh, not only on more, more static fields but also on the other ones. So it's uh, uh, let's say that the most uh, powerful solution in this case. So in terms of requirements to build this, um, let's say, uh, these systems, uh, we need uh, OCR and images with wide quality. So if we don't have this, um, the model will not predict uh, as good enough. Um, and also, uh, as we uh, mentioned uh, before, uh, it's very crucial to have good annotated data, and that data should be consistent across all of the, the crowd. Otherwise, we have a lot of bias in our data set, and uh, we don't uh, want that. And also, it's necessary to have some computational power, uh, in this case, like GPU machines, um, to train um, uh, these models. Then um, we have some some challenge uh, for this, like you need to deal uh, with OCR errors because sometimes uh, the OCR cannot parse uh, the, the letters, the characters, the words correctly. So uh, you need to deal with that. You need also to deal with documents with, with bad quality uh, because in in other ways you will not see perfect documents. So uh rotated documents documents some some skewers or some tail will appear and you need to deal with that um you need to deal with the different types of documents like could be uh the the, the receipts uh, from the restaurants or 
um, the, the, the invoice itself. So there is some also variance on the document itself. Also the, the layouts um, could be very diverse because usually the suppliers uh, uh, build this layout and is not so conventional across uh, uh, all of the layouts and also the language so you need to deal with different language because some language ha have special characters that needs to to be mapped um, to, to the dictionary that we uh, talk on, on the beginning so in order to uh, extract the, and predict on the language that have that characters you need to, to uh, take that in consideration. So here um, you have some, some improvements on the Shagrid uh, research. So, uh, and it's known as birth grid. So instead of uh, use the character level, uh, these authors uh, build um, words, uh, word grid in in a way that instead of uh, map the character they map the word and uh, on the word it has a, an embedded vector so this also um, is a, is an upgrade on the shard read and uh, could be taken in account um, and if you explore this research you will see on the same data set um, this this uh, results are a bit more um, higher uh, in comparison with the shared with uh, uh, way. So feel free to, to also explore the, this, um, this line of research. Uh, then the shared read also enables us to uh, do other kinds of um, use cases, like you can use the shared read as a feature extractor to then uh, classify your documents, for instance, try to, to distinct between an invoice and a receipt. You can uh, use a shared read to, uh, to represent both documents and then build a classifier on top of this to distinct both. Uh, and moreover, you can also try to use uh, the shared read metrics um, to um, try to detect the tables of the document. So there is some ideas that you can uh, do, but th there is a, lo a lot of also other possibilities that um, you can try to use this uh, shared read or part read to um, test on your use case. So right now, uh, I will jump to a little demo to show you how uh, we are using this on BaseCon. So just let me put here. Okay. This here. So um, I, I have here this notebook to uh, go through all of the process uh, to build a shared read and also um, uh, request a, uh, a prediction from our model. So in our case, we have a model that it's a binary model. Uh, that uh, can predict the custom address, the invoice date, the invoice number, VT number, and even from the supplier. Uh, here we are not uh, predicting uh, the customer one that can also appear on the document. And then we have the, the customer number and the total and subtotal amounts. So in this case, uh, this demo we are uh, working on the, the VT number for the demonstration. Um, so here uh, we have the, the image, this is, is a electric invoice. So since our models were trained on Dutch uh, invoices, um, I'm showing here uh, a, Dutch invoices, uh, a Dutch invoices for this demo. So you have here information regarding the, the customer, um, some uh, line item uh, also information. Uh, total amount, um, and here you have uh, the, the information from the supplier. Since the, the, this VAT number, that this is the label that we are trying to predict, you, we have also Ivan, Vic, uh, the, the um, website from the, the supplier, so there is a bunch of information. So the first step is to uh, extract the, the OCR. So we are using AWS Extract to do this. 
So I can show you what is the, the payload of this uh, object. So Textract provides you for each page of a document. You have uh, here, uh, this ID corresponds to the line. So you will see that um, each line uh, has the, all of the words that corresponds to the line. And let me see, for instance, here, uh, you will see uh, also uh, these IDs um, that corresponds to the different words. So despite the line, you also have the words. Uh, and it's from here that you extract the, the geometric uh, metadata from um, the words. So let me see if I can grab here one word, for instance. Uh, okay, so. You have block type of word, and in this case, you have the word itself and uh, the geometric uh, positions also. So extracts from AWS uh, provide you uh, this information at the line and, and at the word level. Uh, so um, here uh, we have the, um, the document again, but here is plotted the, the word bounding boxes that were uh, extracted for um, the AWS extract. So here you can see on these red uh, bounding boxes um, the, um, what was extracted from the document. And then uh, let's start to build the, the shared read matrix. So we parse uh, the, the raw um, AWS extract. So here is actually what we use to uh, to build um, the the shared grid. So at this stage we have the word. This is the dimension of the word, uh, the width, the weight, and uh, the the coordinates of that word. So um, it's important to 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 highlight here. We start from the the word OCR, but then we create a, a, a character OCR. So basically, we need to like uh, do some logic to, to split uh, uh, the word in different characters. And then uh, I have here uh, like the, our dictionary of uh, characters that we are using. So since symbols, uh, numbers, um, we are using both uh, upper and letter uh, uh, characters to extract uh, all of the semantics. And we have this uh, out of vocabulary um, class that if the document is not background or is not on these uh, characters, it will be mapped for this uh, out of the vocabulary um, value. So then uh, we have the, um, the document. Uh, and here you can see the, the shared lead. So this is the, the, the representation of these documents. You can see. The, all of the documents, sorry, all of the, the characters projected in this grid. Um, and um, it, it's, in, it's interesting to see uh, how this encodes, for instance, these headers. Uh, you, you see that in comparison with the other letters, you can uh, map uh, this, this, this structure on the document. So this is very powerful uh, for the 2D layout uh, extraction. Then uh, we have the inference. Uh, uh, we run the inference uh, of our model, and this is the, the payload uh, for uh, the VAT number. And the model predicts this NL8191, uh, and it's what it's here. Let me push here a bit uh, on, on the document. So this is the model for the VAT number. So I will try for total amount. Uh, let's pray to see if this works. So just let me change here the field. All right, I will run these cells again. So, okay, uh, I'm extracting the text extract OCR for this document. Uh, I will push the share read, so the metadata from the OCR and also from the image. Here, this, this step is the same because um, the, the document is the same. Um, so what we will change is just the inference. So we are trying to predict this value, uh, the total amount. Let's say, see what the model will see. We are loading the, the total amount model at the stage. 
um, we will request a prediction and this is our uh, total amount response so the model uh, can extract uh, correctly the total amount for this um, uh, for this document so yeah this is what we are using um, uh, in terms of fields uh, we started for binary models since at the beginning we have uh, lack of data so it's much easier to uh, start with binary but we also have a multi-class uh, model for for this instead um, of uh, have binary and in terms of maintainability and scalability we have also an approach uh, for multi-class um, let me come back to the presentation so yeah then uh, our mission in basecon is to give back uh, we give back time to to the accountant and uh, we use um, this kind of models to to do automatic booking um and yeah it's basically uh what i have for for you guys i hope that you enjoy and if you have some questions just uh, feel free to ask and thank you great joel thank you thank you so much for this presentation i think it was great content and i hope our participants find it uh, useful uh, for their work or who knows for their career <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think we don't have uh, any any question in the Q and A se section, but I think I have uh, several questions for you. <laughs> I'm curious. So, um, okay, the first one is regarding the the data labeling labeling step or phase or process. What's your opinion about when to do this kind of tasks uh, in house or, uh, in other words, by the intern team? internal team, or uh, we should hire the service of a third company? I mean, I believe that if a company is very structured and uh, aware of the, the project itself, I would say that is much faster that deliver this to a, a third party company. But in other way, if you see that this is very specific of your use case, and if you have the chance to build a task force within uh, your team, um that could be more interesting even for cost saving uh, with aws uh, around truth you can set up a, a crowd within your account uh, and uh, deal with all kind of gdpr constraints and it's really easy uh if you have the people and and they are motivated to do that yeah. so i would say that it will be nice also uh. They, they will be need the motivation, right, for this kind of uh, Exactly. Stuff. Yeah, because <laughs> this is painful. <laughs> I tested yeah. that on the beginning, and you, you, you lose a lot of time. And uh, sometimes, is even for people that deal with these documents day, on a daily basis, sometimes to, to distinct where is the customer and the supplier even, it's really hard to, to distinct both. Yeah. Okay, I was thinking about uh, and and uh, what about the uh, hybrid solution? Can can be can be seen as a possible solution as well, hybrid or j just for the proof of concept to to build in house the data set and afterwards the um, are the um, a third company for instance. Is it possible or? Yeah, so I don't know if I understood well, well the question. So you are trying to, to have uh, intern and, and a third party yeah. on the data set building, right? I, I can explain better, I, I think, because I was thinking about the, uh, the data labeling process is, uh, it involves a, a, a lot of time, time consuming, right? Exactly. So the, um, I was thinking about to, in the first, Phase just to to prove the, the the build to build the proof of concept. Exactly. We can um, label just a, a few examples and try yeah. to to build the proof of concept. And after that, if we got to the point that this will work, we can hire the the third company. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the, the downside of that is for this kind of models, you need thousands of examples, even on the uh, on-site uh, solution. 
is still will need uh, some very good examples to 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 do the POC. Uh, so it's always a, a painful <laughs> process. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think it's not a good solution. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the um, but based on um, I was think the, the it's a workflow process, right? It involves a lot of uh, stages or phases. The labeling, labeling uh, um, computer vision modeling, modeling, and um, other other steps. It's based on you um, working out stages, or do you have specific person or people for each stage? So on the on the base kind of we have several layers on the document uh, workflow. So usually uh, you need to upload a document for our tool. And, and then when this document uh, 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 enters our uh, solution, it, it will request a, a prediction for um, the, these models. Um, so uh, this is the, the prediction scenario. But on, on, on the, the training phase, we need to, do, uh, to, to label this separately. Um, of course, that we are planning to on the tool to have some uh, feedback from the user to also um, see if uh, the, the, the the proposal is not correct. Um, they can highlight it where it is, and this could be uh, also used for 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 automatic labeling, and you can use that information to retrain your models. Okay. Uh, thank you. In your opinion, what's the hardest or more complicated step uh, of the world use case? The data labeling, labeling, the modeling phase, the bad quality of the documents, the language? What do you think? Yeah, I think on well, the beginning was the data labeling and the lack of uh, amounts because you see this needs uh, to be efficient, some thousands of examples and we struggle on the on the uh, the beginning with the the, the availability of the documents, uh, but on the modeling phase we also uh, have some some uh, uh, let's say difficult because what comes on the paper sometimes is not <laughs> what it works, and uh, with yeah. some simple solutions you can uh, put things running. Yeah. And which phase do you spend more time? So. In this project, on on the modeling side, uh, and also deal with this uh, pre-processing step. Uh, obviously, on our data set was more controlled, so we exclude some some documents that are rotated, and uh, we are just dealing with with invoices right now. We discard the receipts because we can have both documents. So it's a more control, uh, control, controlled environment, but the plan is also to deal uh, with, with a wide range of, of documents. So you can imagine on the receipts, it will be much more difficult. Mm. Okay, thank you. I don't have any further question. So I think, and the audience is very shy, so. <laughs> okay, so I think it's, it's done. Joel, once again, thank you very much for hosting this workshop at World yeah. Italy. And uh, it was a great pleasure to have you with us. And uh, to everyone else, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you, Joel. Bye.